Um, oh, well, the, the numbers certainly said that, and we felt we had a, um, a pretty strong feeling that if we got some composure back, that we could we could you know, wrestle momentum back. And um, but you know they're they're a really proud football club, and we they didn't surprise me at the start the way they came out. So, um, but I thought it was a pretty mature performance of our guys to to absorb the pressure and absorb the momentum and then respond. Yeah, well, we've worked really hard on it. I mean, clearly, Hawkins and Clark are as, as dangerous a combination as there is going around, I think. Um, and and you know, we've had trouble with Hawkins in the past in particular. So um, you know, I really thought that Robbie Tarrant, if he can get some continuity in his, in his footy and... You know, he's been on our list eight or nine years and I think played 41 games. So, um, yeah, and that's through unlucky injury. So if he can keep playing, he's going to be a valuable player for us. And, but it wasn't just Robbie. I mean, it, it, I thought it was a pretty um, effective performance from our defenders and reward for all the hard work they've been doing. Have you seen that sort of frenzy Robbie Oh, we have. I mean, it, you sound like a genius in hindsight. And I'm not trying to claim that we... I mean, we recruited him as a centre half forward, even before my time. So, you know, he's been he's been at North longer than I have, and um, we saw him playing forward early on. But you know, the, the team needed a, a big, strong key defender, and he's, he's just a fantastic athlete. Um, he just needed to get some continuity of training and playing to be able to show what he can do. Um, no. I, Look, in my view, I didn't think we overhandballed it or, or overkicked it. I, I thought we we missed targets. You know, we um, you know we can talk about our poor start, but really our start was okay. I mean, in the contest and in, around the clearances, we were pretty dominant, but um, we kept turning it over. So, um, yeah, I think that the natural instinct can be when you're under pressure as a team like we were, and Geelong got three or four goals in front. You know, as a coach, you're concerned that the players are going to go into their shell. And to, to the guys' credit, they, they responded well. So, you know, describe it as a really mature performance. What broke over that last team break? Was it just they just hung in there and took the chance when it happened? Yeah, I, I thought it was that. I mean, I, I thought that the game was certainly in the balance. I mean, we've spoken a lot about uh, the character and the commitment of the Geelong Football Club. And, you know, they've had some, some massive challenges over the last little period of time, um, both with you know, family bereavements and um, bigger, longer-term challenges around. I mean, how does a side who have been as good as they have been still continue to challenge for the top four year after year? So they're a really proud g group and they're being challenged at the moment. So we just needed to, to fight it out and persist and um, make sure the, the wheel turned our way in the end. And, and fortunately, it did. Unfortunately, we had players who forced the wheel to turn. And the way it was, Jim, on the first game, you could see Golden Barnhart's come to the Dunsey Strong. Just the way you did it, was so expensive. Yeah, it was. I mean, we've, um, we've talked a little bit about the, the depth on our list. Uh, we've got a lot of guys who we think are capable of playing AFL footy, and, and Trent Dumont seized his opportunity today. And it was only a small one, but um, he was clearly really important for us at the end of the game there. And, you know, he's... We've worked really hard with him and he's worked really hard over the last couple of years to get an opportunity and we feel now that, that he's ready to play AFL footy. Have you said today what Joe Brisbane gave us a little bit of a sneak peek with seven as well, but um, um, the... <laughs> Sorry, mate, I couldn't resist. No, look, Jared took a little bit of time to adjust because this is the first time he's ever played in Geelong. So... Um, that tells you a bit about. I said, mate, well, we, we play down here every year, um, regardless. Um, but th th you know, that's just incredible. A guy's experienced as he is has never played here. But he, he look, he's still not. He's he's a really capable player. I, I really still hold really high hopes for him if he continues to work. Uh, he's a really hard matchup for any team. But he's he's still adjusting to the way we want to play. And I thought he did some really good things today and he did some things still that are not quite the way we want our forwards to go about it. So, um, you know, we're not ticking the box yet. We've still got work to do. Mason Wood also seems to be on Yeah, Mason again, um, due to the, um, the other players that have been in front of him in the, in, over the last couple of years, has meant that he's had to work really hard to get his opportunity. Um, but he's a real competitor and he's a terrific athlete. And, you know, he's, he got a an opportunity through some um, injuries and misfortune to other players and 
he's been fantastic for us. Yeah, I think the sub rule's been spoken about, but I'm pretty confident that um, after today I won't need to say any, any more because we're preparing for the sub rule not to be um, not to be an issue next year because I don't think it'll be in. So we're, we're certainly we've had no indication of that, but I, I just have a really strong feeling that the groundswell is growing and the sub will go at the end of the year. So we'll deal with it this year and then we'll, we'll plan for it not to be there next year. Yeah, and, and he did exactly what we thought he'd do. You know, he's um, he's such a dynamic player and, um, you know, it was a risk for us. Um, to be honest, I would have probably preferred him to start because it was a lot of conversation around how we were going to handle him when he came on and he went into the midfield and, and did what we know he can do. So, um, now we think we've got a few players who we'd like to use in that role too at various stages throughout the year. Um, but our list being what it is at the moment, we haven't been able to do it. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, um, with interest. Um, you know, because we obviously played Port Adelaide the week before. So, you know, I just I keep saying it. The competition is so even, and, and that doesn't mean that the the results are going to be really close every week. It just means anyone can beat anyone on any given day. And you know, if you're a little bit off early, as we were um, today, the opposition punish you. Um, you know, so reigning premiers coming off a loss. Doesn't get any harder than that, I don't think. Yeah, I, I think he's been great. I, I think he's worked really hard. He's still got work to do, but he's uh, he's got all the attributes to be able to play that position for us. Um, and he wasn't overawed by the massive task that Tom Hawkins presents. And um, Hawkins still did some nice things, and, and Robbie will learn from those those um, little positioning mistakes. But um, and we couldn't ask for more at this stage of his of his development as a defender. Yeah, just just the craft of, of defending. You can see from today he's got great hands and he reads the ball really well in flight. But um, you know, it's just it's just the art and the craft of learning to defend. And you know, he's he's done it really well. But it's going to be a work in progress. No, in fact, I didn't even know about it until I got here today. So. Thanks, guys. Cheers. <laughs>